Hello and welcome. If you have been following our live broadcast from the Indian Ocean, you'll know exactly where I am now. However, I would like to take you back in time a couple of weeks. Post our reback marina stay, all our guests have left and our EMC Declan has returned, fit as a fiddle and hitting the ground running. So please join us for our raw, extended boat life cut as we visit new destinations sailing north along the southwest coast of Thailand one last time, including a catch up with Finn in New Zealand before we prepare for our next offshore adventure. So we're currently sailing to Talaga to top up our fuel tanks after a successful reback revisit. After Talaga we're going to head back up to good old Phuket and we'll probably anchor in Naihan Bay again. Difference is this journey is going to be a pretty good blow forecast. Predict winds telling us it could be up to 30 knot gusts. We normally would have gone out to Koh Lippi, but it's about 20-25 miles offshore. And to battle up the coast that far out, we're not that interested in that. So we're going to hug the coastline and minimise the fetch, the wind coming off the land. It actually gives us an opportunity because we're going to potentially visit some islands we've not visited before. So that could be quite exciting and interesting. Once we get to Phuket, we're going to consider our options. There's still a couple of things to do there. We've got to change our batteries out. We were talking to an American lithium battery supplier about getting their batteries on the boat. But the timing to get them flown out here is just too short time frame. In the interim, we're going to replace our lead acid batteries. Then, all going well, we are going to head west. At some point along that journey we'll decide whether we go up through the Red Sea or whether we go down the East African coastline through past Madagascar to South Africa. There's still a possibility even with all this kind of uncertainty that we could go through the Red Sea past Yemen, Somalia and on up into the Suez Canal. There have been some cruising boats go through there recently. I mean the cruisers are not a threat to anyone. We're not a threat to anyone. So, onwards and sailing. We're just coming into Talaga, which I always get confused with Pirates of the Caribbean, Tortuga. Make way for Tortuga! Gives me a giggle anyway. <laughs> I could not, didn't I? <laughs> No room at the inn, Robert. No room at the inn, but we've just uh, ordered them to get off actually. So they just they just started their engines on queue. Ferry's moving. Is this uh, fast or slow? Fast? Yep. It looks like it'd be fast. Just a bit of muscle power. Yeah, let's see how fast this is. How much do you need? Uh, I don't know. About 150, 200 on this one. Then we top up all the tanks. But you pull out, you pull out all the tanks, Dex. You've got to fill all of those as well. See you then. See you guys. It's been good. It's been great times. Uh, actually, now I might stay. <laughs> I'm so funny. Leaving Malaysia. Not sure when we'll be back. Yeah. 
by Malaysia. Oh, and look what Rob found in the build. A 2018 vintage Fiji bitter. Almost full. One careful owner. <laughs> Available. What would that taste like, like now? Yeah, it's probably still okay. I mean, it did fizz before. It just fell over and a little bit fizzed, so it's probably flat. Okay-ish. I wouldn't want to try it. Oh, was with it the, good with the later when model. it was new? It was very good. In the early years, apparently, of their production facilities, there was a bit of variability in the brews. But like, you could drink a whole crate and sort of go to bed sober, or you could have a couple of bottles and be absolutely inebriated, <laughs> depending on the batch. I offered it up on a WhatsApp group chat with the Reback group. <laughs> and nobody wanted it? And nobody, I had no offers. <laughs> I said, going to a good home. And I had nobody, all I got was laughter, those <laughs> laughter emojis. No one took me seriously. I wonder why. We haven't been up the side of the Langkawi coastline before, but it's very interesting seeing this up here behind me is where the gondola takes you up. There's a big span goes between hilltops and it's really really impressive we went up there the way back an absolute engineering wonder actually as far as i'm concerned were you impressed by no, it no i was really impressed by the amazing. bridge oh yeah 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 no i loved it the gondola ride impressive. everything it was yeah, nice ride up and ride back i down. wasn't impressed by the price but uh yes it's not else. cheap people but it is one of those things if you do go to langkawi i think you should save your pennies and spend them on that little adventure because it is it's pretty impressive so we've left the comfort of the cliffs of Langkawi and the wind has now picked up this is the reason we are hugging the coast the winds are pretty strong this week the week we decide to go north again we're not going to go far today because if we keep going we're going to hit some really high winds we're going to stop in at an island we haven't been before but I've been reading about it and it sounds like our kind of place. It's called Taratua. I think that's correct pronunciation. I might have got that wrong. It's really not a touristy island. This one has trails and beautiful beaches, nesting turtles, rivers, lots of wildlife. We're only going to be here for a day. So we're probably not going to get to see much of that but it sounds idyllic. I'm looking forward to this. Hello there. Are there any crocodiles here? Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> there said, there said were 50 we something here? years ago. Actually, there could be crocodiles here. This was a crocodile infested island once when it was a prison, but I think you're very unlikely to see a crocodile in Thailand nowadays. Two, one or two sightings a year. We should be okay. Should being the operative word. We're now going to see if we can hire bicycles and have a little cycle through the island. Why don't we have Declan and Ivan with us? Good question. They didn't want to join us. Just to give you an idea how steep this last bit was, Rachel had to. No! <laughs> I got up, I got up to stand on the wheels, turn oh. the pedals, because it's so steep. Oh, I he slipped. My like, like wheel flat. That will not show it, but that is steep. Whoo, first gear, last gear. And, uh, the corner there. Yeah. Super steep. Yeah. Once you slipped, you're a goner. <laughs> that, uh, oh, okay. The shame of it. Let's go. Oh my goodness. It goes on. Mine on. Oh gee. Train comes to. So I'm huffing and I'm huffing because we just came up a really steep hill and we haven't been on bikes for a long time and it reminds me quite a lot of Tierman Island where we rode over the mountain to the other side of the island yeah. on motorbikes yeah. no effort required at all <laughs> but here dry with caution because now 
we get the reward for coming up, we get to go downhill again. But what um, you're really pointing out should be ride with caution, shouldn't it? That's what you're oh saying. yeah, it should be ride with caution. <laughs> it has got a cyclist on there, so it should be ride with caution. But yeah, whew, that was a good workout. That's good, all right. Feel better for that. Good news, good news, good news. We have tempted the boys in with a cheeky pad thai. Yay, we've got a spare bottle of water just to fill them up and rehydrate them should we need it to go, the boys I say. And we've met a very interesting Canadian Korean guy called Joseph. Hey, how are you guys? Who's joining us on the bikes. He's uh, on the boat that's anchored beside us. Look at these roads. Oh my great. Fantastic. Yeah. Through the jungle. Yeah. Concrete in great condition. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess it hardly gets used. You can only hire bicycles here. There are motorbikes, but they're only for the people who work on the island. So we got off to a nice calm start this morning. Then we put up the uh, spinnaker, asymmetric. Then we hoisted the main as well because it was just the perfect conditions for it. Just left the two reefs in that we had yesterday, it was fine. Now the wind has got up a bit more. It's been getting up to 15 knots right on the beam, the starboard beam. The spinnaker up as well as the main, I'm not sure that's um, okay. In fact, I think we should drop it and we'll just keep the Genara up. Otherwise, it's been good sailing, really nice sailing. We're getting closer to Koh Lanta and uh, we'll be dropping a pick up the northwest end of Koh Lanta. I reckon in about an uh, hour and a half to two hours time. What speed are we doing? We've been doing between six and eight knots and right now we're doing eight knots. <laughs> in fact, we did peak at nine knots earlier on as well. So it's been going really nicely. You know, I'm just being conserved with dropping the sail. I just don't want to break stuff. It's on this, well, I don't want to overload, so it's not going to break. But, you know, we're in no hurry, so we can afford to take it easy. Late last year, Koh Lanta was a town where Rob Declan Ivard had hankered down while Finn was in Trang Hospital two hours inland, recovering from his freediving accident. Once Finn and I returned to the boat, we had promptly left, therefore it remains a place of interest for me and Rob had high hopes that we'd all join him to revisit the lighthouse. I've done my one minute at the lighthouse. It's time to head back to our destination because Rachel and Finn uh, are still at the hospital there checking out this morning. We're heading home, Ben. We're heading home. Ironically, as we were arriving in Koh Lanta for the second time, Finn was lining up for the New Zealand National Rowing Champs. We weren't expecting much of him because he's only returned to light training six weeks prior following a three month break due to viral fatigue. We are in Koh Lanta. We've just come for a wee drive to go out for breakfast. We do not have Ivan with us. Ivan's not a morning person, but also he's not feeling very well, so he stayed he's on. He's also not a person. <laughs> he's not a person. He's not feeling that great, so we gave him the benefit of the doubt. Usually we would pull him out of his bed, but we went for a drive and we just happened across this beautiful little cafe place. We pulled in, There's some guys have created this organic space that they've built themselves. It's super, super nice. It's called The Easy Life. It's a family run business. They built seven bungalows behind the house on his organic garden. And then a lot of the produce from the garden comes here. And in other news, we had a really fun morning this morning, didn't we Declan? Yeah. Watching your big brother racing at the National Rowing Champs at Lake Karapero, New Zealand. Backtrack a little bit. When I left him, it was about seven weeks ago, mm -hmm. from New Zealand, he still wasn't training. He went for a run, he was exhausted. He started training uh, about a week and a half after I, I came back here. And so, he's been training for about six weeks. After having three months off, yeah, pretty much doing nothing. I mean, so really he shouldn't even be rowing at nationals. He'd be out the back door. Yeah. But he was in the final of the under 22 
single skull this morning. And flaming heck, I tell you, it was a neck and neck race for second. Um, the gold medal guy was out actually, he, Oscar, he was out by a good margin, unassailable. But Finn battled his way and held his position, well, came through at the finish with an astonishing Yeah, sprint. no, he didn't, even, he didn't even hold the position, he was like back no, in was about back fifth and, throughout well, the whole race until about the last 500. Yeah. yeah. And then he came up and You know, that, to, do, to have to do that sort of sprint... You need you need lots of training <laughs> to be able to do that at the end of a two kilometre race. Mm. And then we're looking for silver. Oh, it's close, it's super close. I think it's down in lane three. Well done, Finn. What a great finish from you. Hey, God, this kid, I'm gonna tell you, it's astonishing, right? Eh? It doesn't make sense. And this is the thing, the selectors don't see this in his potential. You know, I mean look, if he was in his normal training capacity, he would have won that race. I don't think Oscar would have won that race. But anyway, that's another story. Speculation. But it does tell us that he's he's there. He's there and he's in the wings of the selectors. We're in the mindset of seeing the potential in the wings to make this double skull work. So it's been quite a while since my last update. For those of you who have seen the other episodes, I obviously got pretty sick, well not sick but just ran myself into the ground, just really fatigued and stuff and I'd just get really tired and like I wasn't getting proper circulation, I'd get really inflamed legs, like really fat, um, like what you get when you fly on an airplane. But I have been doing a lot of things to, to get well again and I have been getting better so that's been great. Around Christmas time I started using this hydrogen water which allowed me to then start training sort of around New Year's. Anyway, I started using this water and it's uh, that stopped, all that stuff stopped and I was had a bit more energy and so I was able to you know, start doing limited training. So the last six weeks, what I've been doing wouldn't really be considered training by uh, like rowing New Zealand, but it's just what I could do. Yeah, just raced at the national champs on six weeks of not much training. And so turned up to nationals, a lot less fit than everyone else, but did really well. I got silver in the under 22 single, the under 22 pair, my first ever pair race, the under 22 double, and also won the men's prim quad, which uh, we also won last year. So went back to back on that, which was cool. And did this on, you know, nothing. Um, but I, I really think this, this hydrogen water helped a lot. Um, we'll talk more about that at some other time, but yeah, it's uh, it's crazy stuff. We've been trying to get this lightweight thing happening again, but it's just, uh, it's really disappointing the way rowing New Zealand's handled it. I mean, I can't say too much, but it's pretty, no, it's not cool, really. Yeah, it's looking pretty unlikely that there's gonna, uh, anything gonna come from it. The other guy who I'm hoping to row with, we, we both can't see why. You know, we couldn't have a shot at, at going. So that means the double is over. It is actually over. There's no one going to the qualification regatta in May unless the selectors say, hmm, Finn is back. Maybe we should rethink this. But the selectors are just so narrow in their focus. They need to open up and look at the world. Oh my gosh, there's. Who's that over there in the peripheral vision of my eyes? Could that be a flash of lightning or could that be Finn Hamill? It's Finn Hamill, people. Give him a shot. He's not bad. And I'm going to finish that little monologue with a sip of tea. As will I. So we spent so much time enjoying the food and the ambiance of Easy Living Cafe. But we don't have time for the Colanta Lighthouse now. Declan is devastated. Look at his little face. He'll never get over it. Oh well, back to the boat. And just like that, we're back on the boat. No, no, it's okay guys, you can just watch. Okay. We love to watch you work. Yeah. To further the story about Finn, he's done some racing today. He's done a good race, two really fantastic races especially given his preparation or lack of. Just showing the potential this guy has, he's already shown that anyway, we know that. Silver medal at the world champs, for goodness sake. But, for all intents 
purposes, the double, lightweight double for the Olympics is off. For um, New Zealand? For New Zealand. Partly because, or mainly because, Chris, one of the two, is sick. It's all over. And they don't have reserve, which they could have had in Finn, if they hadn't been so <coughs> pig-headed um, pre-Christmas and just tossed them aside. And there is a process where if one feels selectors have been irresponsible or just haven't acted in the best interests of the uh, athletes or the sport even, you can go through a process and he has t today contacted the lawyer who represented the athletes in that sense. In the interim, poor Matt, who's the number one dog in the double and is still available but has kind of been cast aside, he's feeling it's like why even bother trying? It's just so ridiculous. These guys are so stubborn and set in their decision that it's almost impossible to turn over. The thing is, if you don't try, you'll know the answer, won't you? If you never ask, you'll never you'll know the answer for sure. I'm saying, get in there, have a go, pitch the case, and it's a strong case. Honestly, these guys, they... Anyway, let's see what happens from here. But Finn does have to be the motivator here, inspiring others, in particular his potential teammate. We're at a dive site called Shark Point, which is apparently home to lots of leopard sharks, and it has lots of soft corals and an abundance of fish, which we'll be the judge of. It's just mum and I going in today. Ivan and dad aren't so keen. Dad might come in for a free dive later, but it's just looking like it's mum and I. Dive. Oh, it was good. Visibility? Not good. No. Better than the dive I did with Clint, but still not a great visibility. I think the last good dive we went on was probably around this time last year. Uh, Is that Richelieu Rock? Yeah. It reminded Where's me it? of Richelieu Rock. Except nowhere near as good. <laughs> The reason we stopped was because it said there were leopard sharks here. No leopard sharks, we didn't see a single leopard shark. Did see a lot of lionfish. No leopards, lots of lions. And lots of other fish, I think they're called yellow fusiliers or something like that. Some big buggy eyed things. What else did we see? Oh, some lovely yellow orange fans. Could have been clearer water better than the last time. And Rob didn't come because One of the worst he... dives I've ever done. <laughs> didn't see a thing. <laughs> That's right because you stayed on the boat. That's right I'll clean up. Good. Who? Who put that together? It's up the wrong way! Nice work, boys! You saw, oh yeah, you can. Is it worse than that you saw it and didn't say anything? Because We didn't see it until it went out. No, Deccan, well Deccan pointed out earlier, he's like, that doesn't look right. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're scared. That's my honest reaction to this weather. Oh, uh, what just happened? Oh! fish about that long, and I'm not kidding you, that long, that high, I don't know what's going on, literally jumped out of the water and up onto the deck here, it was flapping around, flap, 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 and it was there for a while, got around here, just tried to grab it and it slipped off the edge. Wow! Ah, could have had fish for lunch. Oh, and also, it's got a history. <laughs> I love history. This place, uh, in the 1930s, 1938 to 1948, was a penal colony. They had a prison on here for political and Thai prisoners. But when the war broke out, they stopped delivering food to the island. So a lot of the prisoners died and those who remained banded together with their guards and they started attacking ships. They became pirates. Apparently they attacked over 130 ships, killing everybody. And then they became a menace in the Malacca Strait and the British Army had to, after the end of the war, the British Army had to come and sort them out. So, Declan, what are you doing in the water? Uh, we left the dinghy here at low tide and tied it on. 
to one of those. Yep. And um, now we've come back, the tide has gone in, and the spot we tied the boat onto is now underwater. So our knot is underwater. And our rope is underwater and stuff. And uh, Who's going to sort that out? EMC. Right. <laughs> Three, two, one. Go, Declan! Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, he's like Superman. Oh, my God. Oh, my. You, that was more than we uh, bargained for there, Declan. For some reason, the tan lines really bring out your nipples, that guy. <laughs> does it? Is he telling the truth? <laughs> they kind of do, don't they? Yeah, can, you're looking, can you looking at the tan, like the tan lines and they're just like, below your nipples? So they're just your eyes your nipples. That's incredible. Thanks for watching. Join us next week as we prepare for our offshore adventure where we get a new high field tender, a new rolly task of sail, new batteries, new flippers, even get a new shirt. In the meantime, if you'd like to check out video from the Ivermectin story we used in our antifoul, we had a lot of feedback about that. Or if you might want to like go see Finn win his World Championship silver medal again, we better maybe we'll show that to the Olympic selectors. Thanks very much. See you next week.